Opal Beaters, it's Gina from WorkedInOpal.com and today I'm going to be showing you how to make a half stretch bracelet like you see here. I have two examples of what we're going to make today and basically the bottom half, we'll call it, is made with stretch cord and the top portion is actually made with wire. So this is a great option if you have maybe one large metal component that you want to use or some type of focal on the top, but yet you still want it to be a little bit adjustable and utilize your stretch cord. So this is just another option for you if you don't want to do a whole stretch bracelet. I'm going to be showing you how to connect the components together and you can really let your imagination run wild. So the materials that you'll need to make a bracelet like this are of course your stretch cord. Now in this video I'm going to be featuring a lot of items from bbcraft.com every month. I share with you a selection of products that I've received from bbcraft and then I follow up with a video using some of their products in a tutorial. So that's what this is today. I had received this awesome huge box and large roll of this black stretch cord. I will leave the links to all these materials down below, by the way, in case you are interested in checking them out. This is a 0.8 millimeter stretch cord, and I do recommend using about 8 to 10 inches of that just so you have enough length to tie off your knots when you're ready to get to that point. I will also be using a 22 gauge stainless steel wire. I recommend any type of, we'll say 20 to 24 gauge jewelry making wire in your choice of color or finish. I happen to be using the stainless steel that I picked up because it doesn't tarnish, it holds its color. And for this project, I recommend about 6 to 8 inches of that. In addition to those items, we'll also need two of these knot covers. Now this is the container that I had picked up on bbcraft.com. You can see that it has a large variety of all different finishes, so it's great to have in the stash for when you need it. You also need your jewelry pliers, wire cutters, a pair of scissors. I suggest some E6000 glue or some hypo cement type glue to put on your knots just to make them more secure. And then I will also be using two three millimeter, very small stainless steel jump rings to connect the wire component to the knot cover. That is optional. You can attach your knot cover directly to your wire component. I just prefer to do these two separately and then attach them at the end. Real quick before we get started in the tutorial, if you would like to shop at bbcraft.com, you can use the coupon code that they set up for you guys. It is Gina, G-I-N-A, and that will save you $5 off your purchase of $40 or more. And just a reminder that they now have free shipping on orders over $25 or more, not only in the U.S., but also internationally. All right, so I'm actually going to be taking this bracelet apart and reconstructing it with you guys. So let me go ahead and do that, and then we will meet back. All right, so to start out, we're gonna be doing the elastic or stretchy portion of our bracelet. And I have my stretch cord already cut in front of me and my two knot covers that we're gonna need. I also have the beads that we're gonna be using today in the stretchy portion. And the length of this is going to depend on your wrist, the size bracelet that you wanna make, the size beads that you're using. So that'll be really specific to you, but at least you'll get the sense of how to put all of this together. So the first thing I recommend is just taking your stretch cord in both hands and giving it a good stretch all the way down. You wanna pre-stretch your elastic or stretch cord first. That way it's not going to stretch out on you any more than it needs to when you're making your knots. It's just a good rule of thumb when you're making stretch bracelets to give it a good pre-stretch. Now that that's done, we're going to go ahead and make one knot on the end of our stretch bracelet. And I'm just going to wrap the cord around my two fingers like that and then stick the end right under that loop just to get us started. And we have the start of our knot and I'm just going to take my pliers and my hand here and stretch it really tight. I love the stretch cord by the way, I do highly recommend it. I have made several things with it and it seems to be very sturdy. I'm just using the black today because I'm using a lot of black and dark beads. They also have this available in crystal clear and it's a great product also. So we have our little base knot here. I mean, this is kind of subjective. You can really make your knots however you want. This is just how I prefer to do it. Now I'm going to be making another knot over this one. I'm going to take the end of this cord and swing it under the other side twice. Just like that. And pull it so that knot sits right over that one we just made. And it's going to want to loosen up on you. That's when you just take your jewelry pliers and your hand 
and pull it again nice and tight. And I'm gonna do this one more time, going the opposite way. So before I was bringing the end of the cord under, now I'm just gonna bring it over and do that twice and just pull it again right over our existing knots. It's not pretty, but it's going to be covered, so it doesn't really matter if it's pretty as long as it stays. Now that we have our first knot, we can pick up one of our knot covers and go ahead and string that on so that the loops here or the top is facing the knot. And what that's going to do, you can see, is it is going to sit right over our knot. Now you want to get rid of this tail, so go ahead and take your flush cutters or your scissors and just snip off that tail. And this would be the point where you want to add just a little dab of glue on top of that knot, just for some extra security if you can. I'm not going to do it because I don't have time to let this dry, and I think you get the idea. So we have our knot sitting right there in the knot cover, and now we can take our pliers, or I'm going to get it started with my fingers, and just close that up right over the knot, just like that. And there we go. So we already have one of our ends ready to go and now we're ready to start stringing. So I have some spacers and some of these chunky check glass beads and I'm just alternating those and I'm going to string them all the way down. And there we have it. I have my beaded portion all done and we're ready to slip on our other knot cover. So this time you're going to slip on the knot cover so that the loops or the top is facing that way toward the outside. And it's slipped on just like that. So this part's just a little bit trickier because you want to keep everything pretty tight. So you just need to kind of be mindful when you're making your knot that you don't want to make your knot and have it end up way up here and then have a big loose gap in your beads. You want to try to pull your knot down as close to the knot cover as you can so this has a nice tension on it and you don't have any gaps in your beads. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold the knot cover and this length of beads with my thumb and my forefinger and I'm going to pull the stretch cord a little bit in my left hand. Then I'm going to wrap it over my two fingers and bring it under the loop that I created. And we want to try to bring that knot down, like I said, as close to the knot cover as we can. And it might be a little bit tricky, but take your time and you'll be okay. Now the first knot I made is too small to where it slips behind the hole on the knot cover, but that's okay. We're gonna continue to make a little bundle of knots like we did before, and eventually the knot is going to be large enough to where it's going to block that gap. So you see my knot is all the way down to the knot cover. I don't have any gaps, but I'm still able to stretch it up to the point where when I stretch it, my knot kind of is pulled up further. And that's what we want. We wanna go ahead and make another series of knots like we did before. So I'm making my loop around my two fingers and I'm going under that twice just for some added strength. And again, we want that new knot to sit right over our old knot. And you can always use a pair of pliers to help you pull that down where you want it to go. So now we have something like that, and I am going to use my pliers on one end and just pull the other also, just to make sure it's really tight. There we go. And I'm gonna do this one more time. Again, just like we did before, except I'm gonna go under the elastic the other way twice. And there's our new large bundle of knots. And I'm gonna give that a good pull. And that's going to be large enough to block the hole of that knot cover. So at this point, we do the same thing. We're just going to snip this elastic right at the level of the knot, and that's where you want to add a little dab of glue on top of that before you close your knot cover. So I'll snip that off, and then you can use your fingers to get it started. And gently use your pliers and squeeze that a little bit and squeeze these loops together. 
just like that. And there you have your stretchy component to add to your non-stretchy component. And it will curve around just like that. Obviously it will be very flexible. And now we're ready to make our non-stretchy component with the wire. All right, I have my wire in front of me and we are going to make a loop at the top. So you wanna take your round nose pliers about an inch or so down and then you want to bend the wire at a 90 degree angle, just like that. Then you'll pivot your pliers about 90 degrees, position them like that. And you want to bring this end over the top of your round pliers. You can see the loop starting to form. Now take your pliers out and position them like this. So the loop is on the bottom of your round nose pliers and you're gonna take another set of pliers in your other hand. And guys, I'm being so detailed about this. I know there's a million videos on how to make a wire wrapped loop and lots of you already know how to do this, but I do have brand new beaters who have never done this before. And I try to be as detailed as possible in my tutorials so that everybody is clear on what to do. And so I took that end and I just wrapped it around the longer piece of wire a couple of times. You can see it will be secure. I have a couple of loops sitting here and I'm just going to clip off that extra portion with my flush cutters. And I'm going to tuck that in with my other pair of pliers just so we don't have that end of cord hanging out. And that is one side of our stretchy component complete. All right, now we are ready to go ahead and string on our beads. I'm gonna do one spacer, one peacock rectangular bead, three spacers, another rectangle, three spacers, another rectangle, and a spacer. So I have all my beads on, now we're ready to make the loop on the other end. So once again, I need to take my round nose pliers and pop those right at the end of the beaded portion. Make sure there's no gaps in between your beads. You want everything nice and tight. And I have the tip of my round nose gripping the wire and I'm gonna make a 90 degree angle with the wire just like that. Then I'm going to pivot my pliers 90 degrees. So they're sitting like that and I'm going to slide my wire down just a little bit. I want the size of the loop to match the one that we already did as best as possible. And I'm going to take this end of wire and wrap it around the top of that loop and then take my pliers out and put the loop on the bottom portion of my pliers. Now I'm just gonna switch hands because it's more comfortable for me. And you can see we have plenty of wire and that's fine. I like to have a little bit more than I need to work with just so I don't have a piece that is way too short. And I'm going to take this segment with the pliers in my other hand and wrap it around our beaded base the same number of times just like that. And you wanna get it nice and reasonably tight, like I said, so there's no gaps. So pay attention to your tension and I'm good with that and I'm going to snip off the excess wire. All right, we have a tiny little piece hanging out that I'm going to tuck in just like that so we don't have anything poking us or snagging our clothing. And that is our beaded portion done. And what I like about the wire is that you can then kind of bend it a little bit. You can bend it so that it will mold to your wrist. You don't have to do that, but I think it looks good with these three, it will have a nice natural curve around your wrist instead of sticking straight out. But that does depend on the bead you're using and the length of this portion. Then I'm just going to bend these loops down a little bit, kind of going along with our curve. Just like that, ever so slightly, just to keep that natural curve going and to make sure that the loops aren't going in two different directions. And now all we have to do is connect these two components together. You can see I have my two tiny little jump rings right here. I wanted to go with ones that were as small as I could that would take up a little bit less real estate. And I'm gonna open one of the jump rings up, twisting it away from me. And I'm gonna slip the jump ring right through those two loops there and then also add one end of our wire portion and then close up the jump ring by twisting it back together. 
and do the same thing on the other side. And there you have it guys, that is the finished bracelet it is all done. There's the stretchy component there. You can see that it slides very easily over my wrist and it makes it great for adjustability. Maybe you don't know who's going to be the recipient of it yet or who's gonna purchase it yet. And this way it'll fit a larger number of wrists. So let your imagination go wild with this technique and have fun making some half stretch bracelets. I want to thank you guys so much for being with me for another tutorial. I hope it was helpful and easy for you to understand. That is always my goal. Please feel free to leave me a comment or a question below. And remember, you can get most of these materials at bbcraft.com. You can use the coupon code GINA to save $5 off your purchase of $40 or more. And all of the links for the products I used, minus the specific beads, will be down below. Other than that, I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your day. And as always... Happy beating. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. For more content like this, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell to be notified of my latest videos. You can check out the information section below this video for links to all my social media handles, recommended products, and my shop and blog at orchidandopal.com. Thanks for watching.